jumped in there. <laughs> Welcome to Nicholas Church on this very special day for Alex and Effie on their christening today. Special welcome to those who may be visiting, coming to support family and friends, and those who may be on holiday or coming to worship for the first time here at St. Nicholas. Also welcome to those who are watching uh, the service online as well. It's great that you can connect in the worship today as well. It also means for Effie and also for Alex that your family will make a recording off the internet at a later time of this service as well. And you can see it as you get a bit older. So something new that is possible now. I will uh, just give a little insight into the service very shortly, but I do have bands of marriage to publish, so I'm just going to do these first before I forget. So I published the bands of marriage between Robert Edward Banash of the parish of Snettersham and Sarah Jane Rust of the parish of Dersingham, and also published the bands of marriage between Liam Harry George Winton and Tony Ann Bradshaw, both of the parish of Tottenhill with a qualifying connection to this benefit. These are for the third and final time of asking if any of you know is a reason in law why they, may, why they may not marry each other, you are to declare. Let's just pray for these couples. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, we pray for Robert and Sarah, for Liam and Tony Ann, as they prepare for their wedding day. We pray your blessing upon them as they look to commit their lives to, together in holy matrimony. In the name of Jesus Christ we pray. Amen. What I will just mention is, before I come to talking about the baptism service today, is as you're aware, tomorrow things, the government have uh, changed the restrictions. Uh, the guidance I only received on Saturday morning uh, from what we can do in church uh, context. So over the coming days, we will look at that and apply that to our local context here. It is likely that we will remain during August to wear face masks because those who live locally have noticed that a number of schools, sadly, have been affected by uh, outbreaks and people trying to isolate as well. So there will be information coming out via email to what we'll do during the month of August. That's just a little update on that. Uh, when it comes to the baptism service part, um, after the sermon, I'll come down to the pulpit and then I'll invite uh, Alice's family to come and stand on this side with godparents and then FA parents and godparents to come and stand on this side and I will try and stand in the middle and so we've got some uh, spacing in between us. If I can ask those when you do come to the front, if you can bring the blue card with you and also keep the face mask on. And after that hymn, we'll then go to the back of the church, and again, we'll have the two separate sides. And when it comes to the appropriate baptism, I'll invite just the parents with child to come to the font to join me, and I'll hand sanitise as well at the various appropriate times. I think that covers everything for the service today. Yes, I agreement from the front, which is always good. So... <laughs> I invite you to turn to the yellow uh, order service and to stand if you're willing and able. And so I invite you to join in with the bold type. O oh Lord, open our lips, and our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Give us the joy of your saving help and sustain us with your life-giving spirit. We have come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins, that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. So we come to our first hymn, uh, and within the restrictions at the moment, uh, congregation, sadly we're not allowed to sing, uh, but we can hum the hymn and the, the limited choir will sing. So it's number 426, 426, The Lord's My Shepherd. <laughs>
So continuing in the yellow orders of service, we come to a time of confession, a time to say sorry to God. Jesus says, repent for the kingdom of heaven is close at hand. Let us turn away from our sin and turn to Christ, confessing our sins in penitence and faith. And we just pause just for a moment just to give us time to think and reflect ourselves just quietly before God in our hearts. So please do in, join with me as we say together, Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore to us the joy of your salvation. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Father of all mercies cleanse you from your sins and restore you in his image. To the praise and glory of his name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord, for he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for you, and in our song will we praise our God. Blessed are you, Lord our God, creator and redeemer of all. To you be glory and praise forever. From the waters of chaos you drew forth the world, and in your great love fashioned us in your image. Now, through the deep waters of death, you have brought your people to new birth by raising your Son to life in triumph. May Christ your light ever dawn in our hearts as we offer you our sacrifice of praise and thanks. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God forever. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day and with the wonderful noise and sounds of joy from the children here with us, so may the light of your presence, O God, Set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. And we now have both our Bibles, please. reading is from Ephesians chapter 2 verses 11 to 22. Therefore remember that formerly you who are Gentiles by birth and are called uncircumcised by those who call themselves the circumcision that done in the body by the hands of men. Remember that at that time you were separate from Christ, excluded from citizenship in Israel and foreigners to the covenants of the promise, without hope and without God in the world. But now, in Christ Jesus, you who were once far away have been brought near through the blood of Christ. For he himself is our peace, who has made the two one and has destroyed the barrier, the dividing wall of hostility, by abolishing in his flesh the law with its commandments and regulations. His purpose was to create in himself one new man out of the two, thus making peace, and in this one body to reconcile both of them to God through the cross, by which he put to death their hostility. He came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we both have access to the Father by one spirit. 
Consequently, you who are no longer foreigners and aliens, but fellow citizens with God's people, and members of God's household, built on the foundations of the apostles and prophets, with Christ Jesus himself as the chief cornerstone. In him the whole building is joined together and rises to become a holy temple in the Lord. And in him you too are being built together to become a dwelling in which God lives by the Spirit. This is the word of the Lord. The second reading is taken from Mark 6. Jesus feeds the 5,000. The apostles gathered round Jesus and reported to him all they had done and taught. Then, because so many people were coming and going that they did not know even had a chance to eat, he said to them, come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. So they went away by themselves in a boat to a solitary place. But many who saw them leaving recognized them and ran on foot from all the towns and got there ahead of them. When Jesus landed and saw a large crowd, he had compassion on them, because they were like sheep without a shepherd. So he began teaching them many things. When they had crossed over, they landed at Gennarasarat and anchored there. As soon as they got out of the boat, people recognised Jesus. They ran throughout that whole region and carried the sick on mats to wherever they heard he was. And wherever they went, into villages, towns or countryside, they placed the sick in the marketplaces. They begged him to let them touch even the edge of his cloak, and all who touched him were healed. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you. If we now turn the page to page four, I'd like to stand again if you're willing and able. So we come to the Benedictus and invite you to join together as we say, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets, God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. May I pray? May the words of our mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and redeemer. Amen. Please do be seated. Now I'm sure most people sitting here like chocolates. Give a little nod if you like chocolates. Yes. Well, it just happens, I've got a Mars bar. Hey! Other chocolates are available, just in case. I don't need legal suits against me. <laughs> but, 
I've got a Mars bar. I could eat it. I am really tempted to eat it, I must admit. It's got people down the other side can see as well. Now, most of us have maybe have a favourite chocolate bar, and then, or a box of chocolates even, if you feel a little more, um, yeah, to d- divulge a little more. Um, but there's some of those different reasons why we have chocolate, and for different times, and for different occasions and purposes. The reason why I've got a Mars bar is there was a saying that Mars used to use up until I think 2015. Can anyone remember what he used to say? Yep. And that's what they said. Yes. Whether that's true, that's another thing. So I'm going to use that, not the, oh, just use the word rest and play, as to help us as we look through the passage from Mark's Gospel, chapter 6. So the Mars bar, they're, what they're trying to say is yeah, it's good for when you're working, it keeps you going, a bit of energy. It's good for when you're resting. When you're taking it easy, maybe after a hard day at work, or you spent all day sorting the kids out, you can rest and you can have some chocolate. And also play. When you want to have a good time, you can have a Mars as well. So work, rest, and play. And I'll add an extra word on at the end. So work. The last 16 months for us have been very trying, as we're all aware. Many have worked very, very long hours. Many have worked normal hours, but actually it has wiped them out. Some have been looking for work. It has been a trying time. A lot of people are in need of a good rest. And Jesus, in this passage, talks about rest. He shows the importance of rest. Do you last have a good rest? Just have a little think yourself. When did you last have a good rest? For some, that might be hard to think about, especially the demands of work and maybe children up to the night as well. The dictionary definition, I thought, let's just check it out. It says rest is the cease of work or movement in order to relax, sleep, or recover strength. So why does Jesus talk about rest? What's the context of the passage? So Mark chapter 6. So just a little bit before the passage we have today, Jesus has sent out uh, the twelve, the disciples, the apostles, to go out preaching and talking about God's kingdom. And they've been really busy, they've been working hard, but they haven't had time to rest. After the, the initial bit of our reading today, there's a Jesus feeds the 5,000. Five loaves and two fishes, where Jesus prays over it, and it becomes a multitude. And the disciples are busy giving it all out. They're working hard, and there's those 12 baskets left over at the end. After that, Jesus walks on the water. And then the final bit of our passage today was the end of chapter 6. Jesus could see, Jesus knew that these disciples, these people, needed a rest from what they had been doing, but also preparation for what was to come. That applies to us here as well. I'm sure many of you sitting here are tired, are worn out from what's been going on in the previous weeks, months, 15 months or so. I'm sure many of you are desperate for a good, good rest. Jesus, in verse 31, says, Come with me by yourselves to a quiet place and get some rest. Rest and we focus. Sometimes rest from routines offers us time to reconsider our plans and our life and our priorities as well. For those who know the service of Compline, night prayer in effect, there's a little quote from scripture, Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. And again, it's that focus on rest. 
and I'll just read this to you, talking about heavy burdens. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. We can come to Jesus with what all the weight on our shoulders, all the things that we are carrying. Jesus understands. Jesus loves us, wishes us to respond. There's also the rhythm of rest as well. Bodies need rest. Rhythm is important. And right at the beginning of time, God in creation, there is rest as well. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2. Verse 2, it says, By the seventh day, God had finished the work he had been doing. And so on the seventh day, he rested from all his work. God blessed the seventh day and made it holy, because on it he rested from all the work of creating that he had done. So rest is a good thing, it's a good thing for God, it's a good thing Jesus showed us. It's a good thing for us. So as we approach the school summer holidays, if you're not able to get away, do just seek to put something in your diary, in your schedule, so you can have a rhythm of rest, so recuperation for the time that is coming, of which we don't fully know the seriousness that we're going to have to deal with in the autumn and the winter. So work, rest, and play. Now, many of us play sports, but I'm looking on a slightly different angle of play. We can play our part in God's church. Jesus encouraged his disciples to rest, eat, and to play their part in the mission of Jesus. And the feeding of the 5,000, which came next, is exactly what they did. They got involved. Play your part. So how can you work, rest, and play your part in God's church here and in different ways in different places just to give you an idea and an insight within the as we've been reopening the churches and doing the live streaming and other activities to reach out and connect to people there's been a lot falling on just a few but as they say many hands make light work and in the coming time, I will be writing probably in the Lighthouse, the weekly newsletter, and in due course, the church magazine when that next comes out. There are a number of roles that we have been encouraging people to take, consider to take up. I'm going to be introducing deputy church wardens. Neil and Tom do a, an amazing job. They put a huge amount of hours into enabling the church to tick behind the scenes. Much of their work is behind the scenes not seen. But having two deputy church wardens would enable some of the extra roles they've had to take on in recent time to be shared, to lighten the load, to give them time, to also to have times of rest and recuperation. I know Katrina, who's been organising with the catering committee, the coffee mornings, it was great to have the first one back in July in church and outside. And again, it'd be great to have some people helping whether they're setting the chairs, the tables out, or packing it away at the end. Many hands make, make light work. So it's the churchyard. It is looking good at the moment, but there's always things to do. Whether that's the wall to repair, doors to repair, for the, uh, the toilet room, uh, or other things. And also, for those who are watching online at the moment, we've got the cameras. People need to operate them as well. So again, as some of you are aware, looking to get a small team who can be the camera operators to enable what we have in the church to be in people's rooms as they watch at home. 
and also deliveries as well. Delivering the church magazine, a lighthouse for those who can't get out still or who are isolating. Please do speak to me. Please contact me if you are interested in playing your part of God's church here. St. Paul, in, the, uh, in his letter to the Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, he talks about the body of Christ, many parts that make the body. And that is very, very true indeed. So I do encourage you to think about that and to pray about that. And finally, I said work, rest and play. That's what Mark said. What Mark says, work, rest and pray, play and pray. I got myself confused, didn't I? I'll get away. Work, rest and play and pray. Give a tongue whistle. Today, Effie. And Alice are welcomed into the church family. It is a day of celebration and joy. And parents and godparents are taking on the responsibility to love, care, and pray for these two wonderful little girls. And on the blue card, shortly, I will ask the question Will you pray for them? Just a sort of short, simple question. And that is a responsibility for godparents and parents to pray for those wonderful girls. Prayer is both simple and complex. We could put it in a nutshell and say it's communication with God. And as the company BT used to advertise, it's good to talk. Indeed, it is good to talk to God. And there are different ways to pray. You can use the word acts, as in the Bible, A-C-T-S. Acclamation, praising God. C for confession, saying sorry. T for thanksgiving. And S for supplication, saying please prayers to God. There's teaspoon prayers. When you're making a brew, whether that's at work or at home, the teaspoon, if you're cooking, the, the abbreviation is TSP. Thank you for T, S for sorry, P for please. Just little ways. And those who are following the church on Instagram, you will see this week, there was an arrow prayer that was on. The beavers and cubs were here on Monday, they did an arrow prayers with them. And I forgot to pick my one, I think it was, so there's a picture posted. And that's again another way of prayer. Arrow prayers is just a quick, far prayer. For example, you see an ambulance risen by, praying for those who are in need. There are lots of different ways we can pray. There's also Bible apps, prayer apps as well. If there's any of that that you'd like guidance or support, again, do speak to me. But just to conclude, God longs to hear us, looks forward to us to come to Him in prayer. So let us all individually commit to pray more. So, as we've looked at this passage, the importance of rest, let us remember, work, rest, play, and pray. May I pray. Dear God, we thank you for your holy word in the scriptures, and we thank you for the importance that you've spoken through your word about rest. You know what's on our hearts individually. You know what we've all been going through and all the strains and the hard work. But Lord, help us all to consider the rest as well as the play and also to pray more, drawing closer to you. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen.
that's not ever done, all the women. <laughs> so, Effie and Alice, if you'd like to come with your parents and godparents. So, Alice and supporters on this side. And then Effie, parents and godparents on this side, please. If you bring the blue cards with you as well. So we've got Alice here, parents and godparents. We've got Effie here, parents and godparents. So we now turn to the blue card. So the first question is to everyone here. Faith is the gift of God to his people. In baptism, the Lord is adding to our number those whom he is calling. People of God, we welcome these girls and uphold them in their new life in Christ. With the help of God, we welcome. So the next question is of the parents and godparents. Parents and godparents, the church receives Effie and Alice with joy. Today we are trusting God for their growth in faith. Will you pray for them? Draw them by your example into the community of faith and walk with them in the way of Christ. In baptism, Alice and Effie begin their journey in faith. You speak for them today. Will you care for them and help them to take their place within the life and worship of Christ's church? We come to the baptism vows at the bottom of the blue card on the front page. In baptism, God calls us out of darkness into his marvellous light. To follow Christ means dying to sin and rising to new life with him. Therefore, I ask these questions. Do you turn to Christ? Do you repent of your sins? Do you renounce evil? Poppy Aldridge, Christ claims you for his own, receive the sign of his cross. Isabel Roseburn. Christ claims you for his own. Receive the sign of his cross. So do not be ashamed to confess the faith of Christ crucified. Fight valiantly as a disciple of Christ against sin, the world and the devil, and remain faithful to Christ to the end of your life. May Almighty God deliver you from the powers of darkness restore in you the image of his glory and lead you in the light and obedience of Christ. Amen. So we now come to our next hymn. So I'll invite the families to go back to their pews, please. And we're going to, sit, uh, we're going to hum, sorry, uh, number 394, Lord of all hopefulness, and we'll hum along. So please do stand if you're able, and the choir will be. Thank you. Thank you.
have these uh, parents and godparents to go first up to the left, to the front and turn left and stay on the left. I will then go next and Alice will parents and godparents if you follow me up on the right hand side. So can everyone else if you can stay in your pews but spin around and look towards the front please, that would be wonderful. There was just one little job left to do. Harriet, got a special job for you. Could you come and put some... Maybe Daddy or Mummy might help you. I'm a bit heavy. And just dip a bit more water in for us, please. <laughs> well done, thank you very much. It's an important job. Thank you very much, Harriet. So again, we take up the blue uh, cards. And please respond with a bold type. Praise God who made heaven and earth. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We thank you, almighty God, for the gift of water to sustain, refresh, and cleanse all life. If a water of the Holy Spirit moved in the beginning of creation, through water you led the children of Israel from slavery in Egypt to freedom in the Promised Land. In water your son Jesus received the baptism of John and was anointed by the Holy Spirit as the Messiah, the Christ, to lead us from the death of sin to newness of life. Lord of life, Renew we thank you, Father, for the water of baptism. In it we are buried with Christ in his death. By it we share in his resurrection. Through it we are reborn by the Holy Spirit. Therefore, in joyful obedience to your Son, we baptised into the fellowship those who come to him in faith. Lord of life, renew your creation. Now sanctify this water that by the power of your Holy Spirit they may be cleansed from sin and born again, renewed in your image. May they walk by the light of faith and continue to forever in the risen life of Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory, now and forever. Amen. Lord of life, renew your creation. So we come to well, the profession of faith, a very short confirmation of what we believe as Christians. So please, again, join with a bold type. So let us affirm together with those who are being baptised our common faith in Jesus Christ. Do you believe and trust in God the Father, source of all being and life, the one for whom we exist? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Son, who took our human nature, died for us and rose again? I believe and trust in him. Do you believe and trust in God the Holy Spirit, who gives life to the people of God and makes Christ known in the world? I believe and trust in him. This is the faith of the church. This is our faith. We believe and trust in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit.
tradición. Pero da fe. And look at the face of all these people. Yo, a star. Effie Poppy Eldridge, I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. People on the screen can see. Are we all one or two? <laughs> I'll lose my mask in a minute. <laughs> right. It's my microphone on the Oh, yes, you've got it. Alice is the bell of Rosemary. I baptize in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. She's saying, what have you been doing? <laughs> I think I might lose my glasses in a minute. <laughs> right, I'll hand you back to my lady. That was lovely as well. It's from the Easter candle. Reminds us of Jesus. So who's going to hold the candle? and Alice. Receive this light. This is to show that you have passed from darkness to light. Shine as a light in the world to the glory of God the Father. And then I like this bottom. So we're just going to do the presentation of the Bibles and prayer books. So Neil is the church warden. He's going to present it.
special occasion having connection with both families here. So it is a joy to, and a privilege to send the baptisms for both Effie and Alice today. So uh, on a personal note, it's very special as well. So we come to the welcome bit on the blue card. There is one Lord, one faith, one baptism. Effie and Alice, by one spirit, we're all baptised into one body. We welcome you into the fellowship of faith. We are children of the same Heavenly Father. We welcome you. And let's do a round of applause. At the end of the service, once people have gone, if, if the families wanted a, a photo around the font, then we can organise that as well. So if we now work our way to, back to our places, please, and then Cathy will lead us in a time. Thank you. And so we come before God to pray, secure and trusting in the knowledge that he will he hear us and help us. Lord, among the busyness and bustle of the world, help us to be still and attentive to your presence. Keep our ears open to your call. Keep our hearts open to your love. Make our minds sensitive to your presence, that we may always rejoice in our relationship with you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And a prayer that covers the coronavirus, which was published by the Church of England. So this is the Church of England's prayer for the coronavirus outbreak. God of compassion, have mercy upon this nation and our world in this time of fear and confusion. We bring before you those who are suffering and who tend to their needs. May those in isolation know your comfort and your company, and may neighbours show your love in works of care, kindness and prayer. We pray for the National Health Service and all engaged in scientific research and we pray too for those upon whose shoulders the yoke of leadership rests, that in their conversation and communication, your still small voice may be heard. We ask this in the power of the Holy Spirit, through the one who stretched out his hands to bless and to heal. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts and hospitality, teach us to be welcoming, open and friendly. May your church be attentive to the needs of strangers and visitors. May each church be welcoming and friendly and so reflect your love. We pray for churches that are struggling because of opposition, for churches that strive to serve in areas where there is apathy and animosity. We remember all who are persecuted for their faith. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, you welcomed the little ones who were brought to you. And so we pray for Effie and Alice, who this morning have been added to the fellowship of this church. Guard them in health and strength as they grow up. We pray for their homes, that they may be filled with full of love, joy and peace and your presence. We pray for Effie's parents, Steve and Odette, and for Alice's parents, James and Katie, that they will be granted patience and understanding as they bring up their little girls, so that they may grow in grace and in the knowledge of your love. We give thanks for the joys of family life. We thank you for all who will share and loving 
in loving and caring for Effie and Alice, for the godparents who have made their promises today, for grandparents, aunties and uncles, close friends, and especially, especially for those godparents who have joined in the promises made by their parents today. Help them and us to live in ways which will strengthen and enrich the life of the family. May parents and children learn together the values of daily increasing mutual respect and understanding, intolerance and patience, and in unconditional love and forgiveness. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask you to bless all who are overworked, stressed or over-anxious. We especially remember those who have no time for their homes or for leisure. We pray for the work-weary, the exhausted and the worn out. We pray for all who are restless and cannot enjoy where they are. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We ask for peace upon all agitated and distressed people and communities. We remember before you all who feel neglected or ignored, all lonely and troubled people. We pray for all who have been misused or abused by others, all who have suffered from traumatic events, all who have witnessed horror. And especially, we pray for those communities in Germany and Belgium so devastated by the recent floods. We ask that our friends and loved ones who are ill may know your love and protection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We give thanks for those who are at rest in you, who have found new peace and new life. We give thanks for all the saints and pray that our loved ones departed may share with them in that glory which is everlasting. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now gathering all our prayers and praises together, we say the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, and deliver us from evil. For thine is the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. So we now come to our final hymn, which is number 336, 336. So I invite you to stand if we're able, and we hum the final hymn. All my hope on God is there.
thank you for those who've made the service possible today, particularly those working behind the scenes, choir, the organist, the choir, and others as well, and our camera operator today, Joel. Thank you, Joel. Just finally, let's just to say uh, that at the back of the church there is a, an offering dish. Uh, it is also contactless, uh, so if you are in a position and you wish to make a donation towards the church and offering, please do use the uh, contactless dish at the back of the table. We just finish with a blessing, a prayer blessing. May Christ the Good Shepherd enfold you with love, fill you with peace, and lead you in hope the end of your days, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be among you, and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.